In this video, we'll talk about amino acids that form the building blocks of proteins. All proteins are made from a set of 20 different amino acids that have a central carbon atom that forms bonds with a hydrogen atom, an amino group, a carboxyl group, and a variable side chain known as the R group. If you look at the non-ionized form of an amino acid, it has a central carbon atom, attached to an amino group, a carboxyl group, and an R group, which is also known as the side chain of the amino acid. If you look at the ionized form of an amino acid, the nitrogen atom on the amino group gains a proton, gaining a positive charge, whereas the carboxyl group loses a proton, gaining a net negative charge. The 20 different amino acids that make up proteins vary only in the unique R group attached to the central carbon, which confers different properties on the amino acids. The amino acid side chains distinguish one amino acid from another and can be grouped into four general categories, acidic, basic, uncharged polar, or nonpolar. Acidic and basic side chains tend to be hydrophilic, whereas the nonpolar side chains tend to be hydrophobic. When determining the type of amino acid from its structural formula, you can ask three questions. Does the side chain have a negative charge? If so, it has lost a proton and must be acidic. Second, does the side chain have a positive charge? If that's the case, it has taken on a proton and must be basic. And third, if the side chain is uncharged, does it have an oxygen atom? If it does have an oxygen atom, the highly electronegative oxygen will pull electron towards itself, resulting in a polar covalent bond. Therefore, the amino acid is uncharged polar. If the answer to all of these three questions is no, then you're looking at a nonpolar amino acid. This image shows the different categories of amino acids, starting from amino acids that have nonpolar side chains, for example, alanine, which has primarily carbons and hydrogens in its side chain, and phenylalanine, that has a benzene ring, which also tends to be hydrophobic, as part of its side chain. Then you've got the polar side chains, for example, threonine, which has an oxygen atom that can draw electrons toward itself, thus conferring polarity on this amino acid. Next, you have the electrically charged side chains, which can either be acidic or basic. The acidic side chains contain functional groups that are negatively charged, whereas the basic side chains contain functional groups that are positively charged. For example, lysine has a net positive charge because the nitrogen has taken up a proton. Amino acids are individual units called monomers that can link together or polymerize to form higher order structures known as polymers. In this image, monomers are being added to a growing polymer through a polymerization reaction. Polymerization of monomers requires energy. This reaction is known as a condensation or dehydration reaction. A water molecule is released when two monomers combine together through a condensation reaction. Hydrolysis is the reverse reaction which breaks down polymers into their component monomeric units. This reaction takes place by adding a water molecule across a bond between two monomers. Panel A shows a graphic representation of a condensation reaction. When adding a monomer to a growing polymeric chain, the hydroxyl of the monomer combines with the hydrogen at the end of the growing polymer to release a water molecule, leading to the addition of the monomeric unit to the growing polymeric chain. Panel B shows the process of hydrolysis where monomeric units are removed by the addition of a water molecule across the bond between two monomers. Subsequently, the monomeric unit is released. The bond that connects two monomeric amino acids 
is called a peptide bond. This bond is also formed through condensation reactions that connect the carboxyl group of one amino acid to the amino group of another, resulting in the formation of a polypeptide chain. If this polypeptide chain contains fewer than 50 amino acids, it is called an oligopeptide, whereas if the chain consists more than 50 amino acids, it is called a protein. This image shows a peptide chain that consists of individual amino acids joined together through peptide bonds with the side chains of each amino acid protruding out of this backbone. Note that one end of the polypeptide has an amino group which is positively charged called the N-terminus and the other end of the polypeptide contains a carboxyl group that is negatively charged called the C-terminus. This gives directionality to the polypeptide chain. To recap condensation reactions, let's look at this clip of amino acids joining together to form a polypeptide chain. On arrival of a second amino acid, the hydroxyl group on the first amino acid detaches and combines with the hydrogen atom on the amino group of the second amino acid to form water. The carbon and nitrogen combine to form a peptide bond. This process repeats on addition of another amino acid. The three key characteristics of polypeptide chains are that the side chains can interact with each other or water. Remember that only polar side chains are chemically active. The second characteristic is directionality. As I mentioned earlier, the polypeptide chain starts at the end terminus and ends at the C terminus. And the third key characteristic is flexibility, where the single bonds on either side of the peptide bond can rotate. This makes the polypeptide structure flexible. In this polypeptide chain, you can see that it starts with the end terminus containing an amino group, ends at the carboxyl terminus or the C terminus containing a carboxyl group. The side chains are arranged in a way that they can react or interact with water and the bonds can rotate to provide the structure flexibility. This image shows the variety in which a polypeptide chain can fold to form different proteins. Some examples are the Tata box binding protein, which binds DNA, hence it has this saddle shape. A second example is porin, which forms a pore in cellular membranes. Another example is a fibrous protein called collagen, which appears in strands giving it strength to maintain cell integrity and provide structural support. This concludes our video about amino acids. After going through this section, you should be able to answer the questions listed on this slide. Thank you.